What's going on everyone? It's Kelly and right now we are in South Texas. It's super hot out here. This is our camp that we were staying in. It's actually a, I think what they call it is a double wide. It's got a gorgeous kitchen, a big king size room, and a big old bathtub. We're here with our buddy Ram with Texas Kings Outdoors. If you want to go on any type of hunts here in South Texas, go ahead and contact Ram and he'll get you set up. But right now we're at the La Santa Cruz Ranch and our goal is to shoot some really nice South Texas buck. Also find some arrowheads, maybe shoot a javelina, and maybe a hog too. So who knows? There's lots of cactus here and it's super hot because we're in South Texas. So we are going to get this show on the road and I'm taking y'all along with me. We made it just in time for the Texas sunset. Yep. Now we're about to go shoot these guns. Oh, well, we're not going very far. <laughs> <laughs> right here. 100 yards. <laughs> There's a shooting range. Got the crossbow loaded up, the chitlins. Luke, Look. have you touched a cactus yet? Nope. We what just got here today. Nobody, he touched this little vine thing with spikes on it. Yeah. Y'all, everything in Texas, every plant, tree, shrub, has thorns on it. Yeah, Texas is the dangerousest place in the world. Yeah. Whenever you're at Texas and you touch a plant, make sure that it doesn't have spikes on it. Because it could be venomous, it could be poisonous, and the sure thing is to not touch scorpions and rattlesnakes. And that was your Texas TED Talk from Luke Arrington. Take your time, just squeeze the trigger. Alright, cool. Uh, who's got, Louis got the keys of the blind? Ears? Yeah. Yeah. Is, yeah, gonna be uh, we're gonna go check the yano. I can't find my shooting sticks. Here. Gosh, uh, it's literally been like a year since I shot that gun. Let me know what I did. So they're gonna go check the target and see where that bullet hit. Every time you fly on an airplane, always target practice your guns, your crossbows, your bows, because airlines are rough on your stuff. What is it? Walk down here. Give me a ride. <laughs> Pick me up. For real? Yeah. Dang, Ram just said I got a bullseye. The dirt. There's so much dirt. Look at that. Did you just hit bullseye before me? That's where you hit, babe. Oh, really? Yeah. For real? Yeah, stand out of the light. Well, see? dang. Look at that. Haven't shot that rifle in a year. I'm over here so you can film it with the light. There you go. Look at that. That's Kelly's shot. This is my shot. Kelly's mine. See? It was a good idea to get me my own rifle because I'm comfortable with my own weapon. <laughs> Ram, you know what that means? If she whist misses or wounds one, it ain't the gun's fault. Touche. You did good, babe. Thanks. really 
30 right now we're actually wrapping up our morning hunt and ram is over here showing me his trail camera hold on the lens looks a little dirty and look what he caught on his trail camera now we are in south texas like what do you say 20 minutes from mexico i'd say about a probably about an hour away an from hour yes. an hour away from mexico and look what he got on his trail camera that is insane open border mm, that's crazy that I don't even know what to say like that's insane he just showed me just casually because it happens all the time they'll get people crossing over on trail cameras just because it's open hunting land out here so the truck's pulling up to get us we saw Gabe flying the drone too <laughs> so we're gonna wrap it up we're gonna go try to find some javelinas for the kids to shoot and that's that So we literally just got in our stand. This is Louie and we're setting up. I mean, the, the truck who dropped us off hasn't even left yet. I turned around, there's a big old javelina just in the road. I load my gun real quick. I think he heard it and he just trotted off. So he might be back though. Give him longitude and latitude. Okay. 
it says 28.06. Got it. And All right, sir, I will let them know. Okay. And there's about three or four agents already on their way out there right now. Okay, perfect. Because there's about right. 12 of them from what we counted, and we have visitors and stuff, so. Okay, are you okay with us going in there right now, though? Yes. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Thank and you. you said there was about 12 of them? Okay, thank you.
so the sun's going down fast. I just walked into the cactus in the brush and I found more blood, which is a good sign, hopefully. Oh boy, this is some thick stuff. And there's more blood right over here. This is some thick stuff. It smells like a bug around here. There's more blood right here. I see hoof prints. Aye, aye, aye. I wish I would have brought my GoPro. This is gonna suck. All right, came over here. Oh, you're on, girl. Yeah, there's more hoof prints. Over here. right here what you found right here yeah what else do you see came from here and the blood goes this way okay so she probably went in through here Bobby. Okay, so it is the next morning and we brought some dogs out on this deer that I shot last night. Um, unfortunately, we did look at the footage and although I was trying my hardest to aim at that shoulder blade, it looks like I shot a little bit lower, basically making it a quote unquote gut shot. Um, it was pretty much like right behind the deer's elbow. It looks like the bullet made an impact. Um, so it was not the best shot at all. The deer did bleed a little, so we have um, a small blood trail. I found a couple small pools of blood in there. So we have the dogs right now on them and hopefully we can find him. But unfortunately things like this do happen while you're hunting and we don't like it. I mean, it sucks, honestly. When I shot that deer and I saw it like just shot it and it walked across the road, looked around and it walked back across the road, I was like, um, that's weird. Cause normally when you shoot a deer, it either does this big like butt kick up or like, you know, runs or like it, it, it just reacts differently when you shoot him correctly. And this buck didn't act like that at all. It acted like I didn't even shoot him. So we'll see. But now it's just a waiting game, and hopefully the dogs will find him. Alright, so Gabe just called us, and Gabe is actually still hunting right now, but it looks like the dog man found the deer and dragged it out. Um, unfortunately, they said that the coyotes did get it real bad last night. So, I don't know how much I'm going to show that on YouTube, obviously, because you guys know about... You can't show gruesome stuff on YouTube, so let's see. Hi. Hi, Santa. Kelly. Good. How are you doing? Good. I met you last time at Boss Races? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Oh, boy. How far, how far into the woods was he? 200 yards. Jeez. <laughs> I need to get Blue Gabe some of them chaps. <laughs> Last night, Blue Gabe came out to look for my deer at night because he said you could easily see blood at night. But of course, Blue Gabe wore shorts and I was picking cactus 
out of his legs all night. Yep, that's him. Oh, poor baby. So I'm just showing you guys here up because the coyotes did get his other half, but he is officially a dead deer. Beautiful deer. Good job. Thank you. Good boy.